In this video, I want to share some parts of the Chinese culture with you that I learned here as an expert living in China since 2013 now. So in the last six years, I got a little bit of the idea um, how the culture in China works. And I wanted to share that with you today because I think it's very crucial when you start importing from China, actually dealing with a foreign culture, it's a very good idea to understand a little bit of it or to get at least a hint or an idea. And obviously, I can't tell you everything about the culture here. Um, even me, after six years being and living in the country, speaking Chinese, I don't even understand every little piece of it. But I want to give you the high-level overview. I want to show you some examples. And all of this video doesn't really um, go deep into strategies for importing and sourcing and selling and profiting. But I thought it's a really good idea to just get a general overview about the culture you're about to deal with. Like I said, I mean, obviously I'm not Chinese, but my girlfriend is Chinese. I've been living in China for so long and my business partner is actually Chinese too. So there's a lot of relation to that. And over the time, I witnessed a few examples that I would love to share with you today here at the Easy Peasy Ecom channel. Even if you're not planning to go to China yourself, it's always a good idea to learn about it because it will help you understand a little bit and kind of make your life easier once you start sourcing here in China. So today I'm going to speak about two things. The very first thing in China is guanxi. The second thing is mianzi. And I'm going to talk about this right now here for you. So I'm just going to talk about some examples. I'm going to give you some situations that I've witnessed here in China. And before I go there, make sure to subscribe to this channel because usually we're talking about how to source your product, sell your product and profit from your product online. So if you want to hear the newest tricks and tips that we find out for our business, we always share this here very first on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss out on any new videos we're bringing out to you. So let's start with guanxi. Guanxi means connection. It's a little bit like relationship, but really means more connection. So what that means, for example, if you have kids that you want to send to a specific school and you know this, this school is only accepting a handful of students, but you know the head teacher, then you can leverage that connection to the head teacher and, you know, use the guanxi to get your kids into the school, um, not through the official way, but through your connection. Or if you have a sourcing agent and that sourcing agent personally knows a salesperson in a factory that you want to buy from, well, the sourcing agent can then leverage that connection to get you a better price and to make your life a lot easier when you source your product. But in China, this goes a whole way further. So people strategically create these connections for things that they want, that they you know need later on. So if they already know, well, in the future, I'm going to need a connection to this person or it would be good to have that connection, then they start inviting the person for dinner, doing them favors, making them gifts and doing all of the things to create or to start creating this relationship. And to be honest, when I first moved here and I witnessed that, I always thought it's a bit fake. You know, I didn't understand the background of it. And I thought, well, they're just nice to each other because they want to take advantage of each other later on. But it's really not that way. Because to be honest, now I see it's more like scratching each other's back because it's not like you're leveraging the connection and you're only getting something from that person. Let me give you an example in my business, actually. So when I go and I want to find people that could promote my sourcing course, that could promote this YouTube channel, there would be a very wrong thing to go out to those people that I seek the connection and the guanxi for. And I go out to these people and I say, hey, please promote my channel. This is not going to happen, right? So instead, I start building a relationship. And you will see through the process of building a relationship, you're actually giving the person so much more than what you can get out of it, you know? So, for example, I find a, a company that teaches people or that actually focus with a software solution, how to find products on Amazon. So I invite them to my podcast and I record a video for YouTube and I even wrote a, a blog post for them. And then it got even so far that I built a whole sales funnel for them for free that I recorded a whole video course on how to find your product for them that they can leverage. You know what I mean? So I built so much upfront and now I can leverage the relationship. Now I can leverage the connection and ask them to promote my course or ask them to send people over to my channel, right? So you see, it's not really that only I took, right? It's always a giving and taking. And that's actually one of the biggest takeaways and 
one of the things that people always misunderstand and do wrong when sourcing in China is that they think, okay, I want to source your, I want to source this product. So I'm going to buy for you. This is what I want. Please give it to me. You know, there's people never establish any kind of relationship at all. And that's one thing that leads me actually to a point where I absolutely encourage you get to know your supplier, get to know the people that work there, get to know your salesperson, get to chat them, take your time for them, and things will become a lot easier when you source your product here. Let's talk about one thing that I always found interesting, which is face, which is giving and taking of face, which in Chinese we call mianzi. So this usually, it's very similar to guanxi, but it's very different as well. <laughs> so because the, the mianzi is more when a third person is involved. So for example, if I go out with my girlfriend and we're, we're, we're within a group of friends and I talk about how well she cooks, I'm giving her mianzi because in front of other people, I make her look better, right? So when you go out with your boss, you always try things to make them look better, to hold the door for them, to maybe carry things for them, right? So you always try to give people mianzi, you try to give people face. It also works the other way around, but usually it's when a third person or is, in, is involved. For example, I witnessed this the other day. I went into a restaurant and then um, a person comes in that his friend was the waiter. So the, the, they, they greet each other, he sits down, and the hotel or the restaurant manager actually to give the person face to give the waiter face and means in front of the friend the waiter went and took the menus for the person and handed it to the uh, the waiter and then the waiter took it and gave it to the customer the waiter could have just gone take it itself but because the manager wanted to give the waiter means in front of the friend the manager did that for them and that's Another example. Uh, let me tell you one more story. Well, this actually works the other way around because with the, with the face, you always want to, um, kind of create it and, and have it at the same level. So if I give you face, then later on, you have the urge basically to give me face back. Let's relate that to a Christmas gift. Okay. So if I give you a Christmas gift and you don't have a Christmas gift for me, you're going to feel bad, right? So next time you're going to make me an even better gift to make up for it. And this is also kind of how this works as well. So for example, a friend of mine went with a Chinese supplier um, and they, they were negotiating and the Chinese supplier um, wanted to charge extra to actually load the products into the truck, which is usually a thing that the supplier just does. There is no extra charge for it. So my friend said, well, let's go for dinner and talk about it. So they went for dinner and during the dinner, my friend said, well, let me go. He had to go to the bathroom and then he went and secretly paid the bill for the table. Now, later on, the Chinese factory owner had to go to the bathroom, right? So the factory owner left. And when he came back, he was furious. He was very angry with my friend that he already paid the bill because he took his face. So to regain the, the, the face, the owner of the factory says, you know what? Let's waive the fee and, you know, we, we're going to load it for free. And that's how the, how that works. And it's very hard to, um, you know, play around with that and, and, and give people face, take people face. It's a, I think, even me living here for so long, that's the thing that I can't even do yet. But you get more aware of things. Once you're aware of this, you can start to leverage that and to, to just simply understand it and appreciate that there's a very different culture going on. And I just wanted to share this with you today because I think too, many, too few people take the time and actually research who they're actually dealing with. Because I want you to not see sourcing your product in China as like a chore you have to tick off before you can finally start selling it. I want you to see it as like a challenge. I want you to see it as a, uh, an opportunity to learn about someone else's culture, to learn about how to actually interact with someone else half the way around the world. Because things work very, very differently in other cultures. And I want you to appreciate that. I think too few people do. And I can only encourage you to take the leap and start learning a little bit more about the culture that you're actually dealing with. So now that you have an insight of how things work in China and a little, little tiny bit of a cultural background, um, I want to invite you to my free sourcing web class because the free sourcing web class actually is going to give you the exact steps to follow how to find a reliable supplier in China without getting screwed by Alibaba suppliers. So make sure to check out the description because in the description, I'm going to have a link for you where you can go over, sign up to the free web class, just choose a date and time that works for you. And I see you on the class.